Once third generation Ryzen was announced and the benchmarks came out, I saw that a lot of the stuff I was doing on my computer was actually very low thread count, meaning a lot of single threaded improvements would go a long way to improving the speed and resolving the frustration at waiting for things to finish on my own computer. So I borrowed a 3600X and I'm going to compare that against my 1700X and also a couple benchmarks on my wife's 2700X and to see if the sacrifice of losing a couple cores is worth the improvement that I'll gain in single thread. But before benchmarks, a couple things need to be addressed. The first is motherboard compatibility. The Gigabyte B450 Aorus M that I'm using with my 1700X is great for the 1700X. I can get my memory up to 2933 out of 3000 megahertz on the XMP profile, and things are pretty good there. But for my wife, that is not the case on her 2700X and ASUS B450F Gaming. That motherboard can hit 2667 MHz, same memory kit, unless you're doing anything video related or 3D. Which means, with her work being Skyping over the internet for several hours a day, we have to run her memory at 2400, the next slowest option. Both of these motherboards put up a fight when trying to get set up with the 3600X. My motherboard would not even post after getting the most recent BIOS update, as long as the 3600X was in it. It still worked plenty fine with the 1700X. My wife's motherboard would work with it. However, any kind of manual specification regarding clock speed, memory, it just would not post. It would give you the error LED for memory, and you just had to keep flipping the power supply on and off. In fact, even with all the settings cleared, you have to reset the power supply a couple times before it'll actually boot. So I went out and bought a third B450 motherboard, and like they say, third time is the charm. I updated the BIOS twice, because there was a prerequisite BIOS before the most recent one, and then finally, everything was working. In fact, not only was the 3600X able to run memory faster than 2133, I was running a 3000 MHz kit at 3233 MHz, no problem. As for now, because someone out there is definitely going to run into a motherboard compatibility issue like I did, I'm going to address some of the benchmarks if you have a motherboard that doesn't quite work with 3rd gen Ryzen, but you are able to at least get it booted and running memory at 2133 MHz. After a few of those benchmarks, then we'll look at the actual overclocked way things are supposed to be, such as with an X570 motherboard. What we're looking to see is if I were to get the 3600X going down two cores, is the improved IPC and clock speed enough to make up for having two less cores while improving all of my single core work? 1700X, running at a 3.9 GHz overclock, 2933 MHz RAM. 2700X, stock clocks, liquid cooled, 2400 MHz memory, and 3600X, we are currently just running at stock settings, including stock memory speeds. In Cinebench, the 6 core 3600X is not lagging that far behind, just about a couple hundred points, and that's it. In Cinebench R20, and Cinebench R15, we do see a bit more of a drop-off. In the wintertime, when I heat up my humble abode using only the heat from mining, we can see that I'll be getting plenty of Moneros for that heat output. In fact, not that much slower than the 2 more core 2700X. And for protein folding, if I wanted to benefit the medical research community while generating heat, we can see that things are looking pretty good. Now one thing to note here is that while the Monero mining does use all six physical cores, folding at home is a single threaded benchmark. So just something to keep in mind. As for the benchmarks that truly matter in life, video games, we can see that the 3600X, despite being handicapped with significantly slower memory, we do see improved FPS. We can see Unigen Valley, a synthetic benchmark that you're welcome to compare against. It was run at 1080p, Ultra, 4XAA, windowed on a Vega 56. As for Rise of the Tomb Raider, it's basically graphics card limited with the setup I have at 1440p highest detail settings. And as for Rocket League, well, 
it's basically hitting that 250 FPS limiter all the time. There's only a couple frames that dip down below that. But to hop into some detailed frame time analysis on City Skylines, a famously CPU bound title, we can see that we do actually pick up some higher average FPS, but the frame times are less consistent. We can see our standard deviation goes from 3.4 to 4.6. But with that roughly 4 FPS improvement, that means that while there are some frame times that will be worse on the 3600X compared to the 1700X, most of your frame times are still better, even if they're not quite as consistent. Whenever I'm doing 3D design and having the computer check to see if the model is watertight and ready to send to the printer, or if I'm actually asking some printing software to take that shape file from 3ds Max and convert it into actual printer motor steps, we can see that there is a noticeable improvement going from that 1700X to the 3600X. Whenever I'm slicing this dragon head that bolts onto my car's air intake, we can see that we have a nice 4 second improvement. That's 1 sixth improvement. And if I'm slicing a vase, we can see that the improvements aren't nearly as extreme, but they are still there, measurable and repeatable. Ultimaker Cura is not an 8 core workload. It tends to average about 1 to 4 cores in my experience from models I've sliced on it. However, when we get to video and 3D rendering, we get to some all-core benchmarks, places where the 1700X does flex its muscles against that 3600X. We can see that for 3ds Max, as I render this cartoon doge head for my Windows 10 t-shirt, which you can get on Amazon, link in the description. Many wow. Much meme. The benchmark I used for Adobe Premiere in DaVinci Resolve is just a 30 second 4K60 export from a recent project I uploaded to the channel, just to get an idea of what I would be looking at for what most of my projects look like, at least the ones where I appear on camera. Adobe Premiere sees about a 13% decrease in rendering performance, and DaVinci Resolve sees about a 20 or so decrease in rendering performance when dropping down to 6 cores. Taking a look at all of these benchmarks together, we've got my wife's 2700X in yellow and the 3600X in orange. Our center line here is the 1700X as a reference point. We can see that when it comes to gaming or any of the 3D stuff, which is perhaps the most time sensitive where I'm sitting in front of the computer waiting for one step to finish so I can execute the next one, we can see that the decrease in rendering performance is significant, especially in DaVinci Resolve and to a lesser extent Adobe Premiere. Whenever I render something with ray tracing in 3ds Max, it tends to follow roughly similar performance to Cinebench when comparing processors. Overall, the 3600X would be a good improvement for gaming and working on 3D, but not so much video. But thankfully, we have that other motherboard that we can use to overclock the 3600X and get the memory up to speed. Despite a test install of Windows 10 doing some funky stuff with Task Manager so that we had to use command prompts to see if the memory had actually taken in the OS, we can see that we were able to squeeze 3232 MHz out of a 3000 MHz kit of RAM, and we have two overclocks that held stable, at least for Cinebench. We can either do an all-core 4.22 GHz overclock, or using Precision Boost Overdrive, we can get 4.3 GHz on a single core and 4.14 GHz sustained all-core turbo. Again, since most of my workloads are single-threaded, I'm going to stick with the Precision Boost Overdrive option instead of that manual all-core overclock. Here we can see that in Graphics Limited Rise of the Tomb Raider, we do see a small improvement, 2 FPS. Taking a detailed look at City Skylines, we can see that the average frame rate is roughly a 33% improvement over that 1700X. And besides that, the standard deviation has greatly decreased, largely thanks to that increased memory speed. In Ultimaker Cura, slicing our two files, we can see that the vase is still faster, but not necessarily by a huge amount. We're comparing fractions of a second here. However, for that car part, we are now down to about two-thirds the original slice time on that 1700X. As for exporting video, 
we can see that 3ds max that's basically not changed much instead of a second over the 1700x we are now one second under the 1700x we can see that davinci resolve is still a little bit slower although we have made up roughly half the gap from before and adobe premiere surprisingly is actually faster i guess it really is true what they say about premiere favoring high frequency and high ipc over raw cores Going back to Cinebench, since we were doing an all-core workload here, I did include that all-core benchmark, and we can see that it is very darn near the 1700X. Despite having two fewer cores, it still holds its own. Taking a look at Monero Mining, just about on par with the 2700X, again with two fewer cores. Single-threaded folding at home, much improved. Taking a look at our gaming and Cinebench benchmarks, we can see that while we don't do as good in Cinebench when it comes to mining cryptocurrency, doing protein folding research, or playing games, the performance benefits are definitely worth not having those two cores. Getting into the benchmarks that actually bring me a paycheck at the end of the month, we can see that for 3D work, hands down, 3600X is absolutely the way to go. When it comes to exporting video, as long as I'm using Premiere instead of Resolve for some projects, things will render slightly faster. So for those wondering why I'm comparing two 8-core CPUs against a 6-core CPU, it's that quite frankly, as you can see, the only things where the 3600X is slower is where I'm exporting video, and quite frankly that's about it. Some of my 3D renders will go a little bit slower, not having two cores, for instance if I'm doing ray tracing or going for photorealism, but at the same time, it's not like I'd be sitting in front of my computers waiting for those tasks to complete either. If I've got 30 minutes of not using my computer, I'm not going to spend it sitting in my chair staring at a progress bar for half an hour. I'm going to get up, go watch an episode of TV on my phone, catch up on YouTube, or make myself some dinner. In my opinion, waiting two to three extra minutes a render once or twice a week for me to go save a hundred bucks on not buying an eight core CPU is worth it to me. For other people, that may be different for you. Personally, I do have an interest in that 3950X with 16 cores replacing my Threadripper 1950X in my virtual machine host. But until then, if you're looking for a goofy t-shirt or all of the ATX dimensions for making your own computer stuff like I do, check out my t-shirts on Amazon, or if you want to download and 3D print your own computer case, you can use one of my ready-made designs at 3dpc.xyz. Check out these other videos, and I'll see you in the next one.